Bill Revs, is he a time traveler, an animation glitch, or something else? Many people are asking, did Mattel put Bill in the wrong series because I can clearly see him at the stands of the Thunder Hollow Demolition Derby. I mean, therefore, shouldn't he be in the Thunder Hollow series? But wait a second here, there he is again at the Cotterpin Bar chilling with Vanden Kerr watching Cruz Ramirez and Lightning McQueen just stroll on in. So what's going on here? There's no way Bill could have gone to the Cotterpin Bar faster than McQueen and Cruz Ramirez. Or maybe he could have. Maybe it's an animation glitch. We're going to dive into all this later on in the video. So stay tuned. Of course, if you guys don't know, all these new single cars that I've been reviewing lately have been from Case E of 2019. I actually unboxed that case a couple weeks ago. So you can check out that video in the description below or the card suggestion pop up in the top right hand corner. If you like case unboxing videos, I have another one coming out in just a couple days for the next case because there were eight new cars in case E and this is the eighth new car to review up. Actually, I can't believe I got all of them reviewed in just a little over a week. So I hope you guys have been enjoying that content flow and we have another whole new case to delve into in just a couple days with a bunch of other cars even from the collar pin like Andrew Vrooman and he's even on the back there so yeah lots of fun stuff coming our way so of course he is in the collar pin series that's apparently where Mattel deemed him most importantly to be at I do really like his artwork there it looks fantastic and of course you can see the car a little nice window and on the back here, you can see Jenny Tolan, Xanadu Bumpers, Vandenker, and Andrew Vrooman. Andrew is in case H, and I will be reviewing him in just a couple days. Vanden, I think he's probably in case J, but it's currently a little unknown. Xanadu, right there, was in case E with Bill, and I reviewed her in the description below. You can check out that video. And then Jenny is definitely in case J, which is the case after case H here. They do skip some letters. Like, I don't know what happened to the G case. They usually do G, but that just doesn't exist this year. They never do I because it looks too similar to the number one. Same thing with O. It looks similar to zero. They just completely don't do those because it would cause confusion. Anyway, we have a nice picture of the collar pin bar and grill neon sign. And you can even see a little bit more text kind of fading away on the wood. Friends of the late, great, fabulous Hudson Hornet gather at the Collar Pin. That's referring to River Scott, Louise Nash, and Junior Moon, and Smokey, of course, because I personally doubt Bill Revs actually knew Doc Hudson, but that would actually be pretty cool if he did. So I'll be right back with Bill opened up. Alright, so here is Bill out of the package looking awesome in kind of that rusty, dirty looking way. But without any further ado, let's get into this craziness surrounding him with the time traveling. I personally believe he's a time traveler, but you guys probably won't believe me. So we're going to talk about how he's an animation glitch. Alright, here's my hypothesis. So Pixar animates. Let's say this number is probably wrong, but 2,000, it's probably actually more than that. Let's go 3,000 unique individual cars that they can use in the backgrounds of all the scenes. Piston Cup Stadiums for the races, Florida 500, Collar Pin Bar and Grill, Cars on the Highway, Thunder Hollow, and all those scenes. Same thing would go for Cars 2 when you're at Port of Course of London, Tokyo, Radiator Springs. So they do this probably all the time for every movie maybe even some cars you know transgress each movie i think cars 2 and cars 3 had some similar cars like the volkswagen bugs which i talked about in my review of xanadu but more so yeah cars 1 didn't really have any similarities to the other two movies in terms of the background cars at least from what i noticed but let's start at the very beginning here when we first see bill revs at the thunder hollow when 
Luigi and Guido are muddying him up to look incognito in the skies and we just see a trunk shot of him and then he reappears in the stands watching the demolition derby. Now no time travel is involved here. This makes perfect sense for him to move from wherever he was before to the stands and settle in for the show. Makes perfect sense. But for him to go from the stands to this small town Thomasville bar and grill in a seemingly like instant, like in the same time that it takes McQueen and Cruz to get there, I don't know, it seems a little fishy to me. I mean, sure, he could have beaten McQueen and Cruz there because they took a detour trying to get Cruz back on track because she kind of dissented for a little bit there. But my personal opinion is that Pixar just copy and pasted Bill to appear in the collar pin. You know, they took, they had all these cars already animated and they only needed like 20 or so for the collar pin, probably even less than that because we're not counting the main characters or the pities, just the basic cars. And they just, you know, they're like, all right, this guy looks like he could appear here. Copy, paste in the collar pin. Now this is all right, like it makes sense because there could be two of the same cars in the same universe. Obviously that could happen, like it's just two cars that we see, you know, out and about now, even though it's not likely you'll see two blue 2007 Mustangs driving down the road back to back, but in the same vicinity of each other. Like same thing with people, you know, you see somebody who I don't know, naturally tan, blonde hair, blue eyes, tall, and then you find another guy that has those same exact qualities, and they kind of look the same. But, I don't know. My personal opinion, since there was only about like 20 characters in the collar pin, and they were all shown pretty up close, I think they should have just individually made all those characters unique. Just because they're so close, they're not in the background, and I think that it just would have made for a better experience if they made those, you know, collar pin exclusive cars instead of reusing them from the same bag of stock animations they already had. It's not a big deal to me. I mean, I think it's fine. It maybe even adds a layer of depth if it is Bill at the Thunder Hollow and then again at the collar pin. I think that's cool. And they actually did this with a couple other cars like Jenny Toland as well. And I'll talk about her when I review her next month when she comes out. So that's a lot of rambling about Bill Reb's backstory there. But now let's get into the review of him. So he is a pretty cool looking station wagon here. Not a big fan of his eyes. Of course, this you know, goes to the whole Thailand issue here because of the fact that the eyes are so glossy and shiny and the rest of him is this matte rusty finish. It doesn't really match, but it's not the worst Thailand eyes. He has a nice grill there with those lights. It looks like some other lights kind of faded off there. You just have the side ones now. The bumper is a separate plastic piece. I do like that smile. He's got some nice side view mirrors there. I love the dirt detailing here on the bottom along the fenders. Just looks very realistic. I also love the wood kind of design. I think these would be called woodies, these station wagons, even though it looks a little more of a brown stripe than it does wood. But if you really do look closely, it's definitely meant to be wood. So that's super unique. I also love the kind of gray trim around it. Same thing with the windows. Nothing on the roof, just some rusting around the lining. On the back here, you can see the trunk handle, the tail lights, and then the gray plastic bumper. Here's the base, L52A, that stands for the 52nd week of 2018 when this guy was produced. Yeah, I absolutely love this guy. I'm surprised it took so long for you guys to want me to review him because he actually, you know, he turned out to be the least popular because of the fact that, you know, every time I did a video, I put a poll asking you guys, who do you want me to review next? And he never got voted. And that's why, you know, he's left for last. But I think he's actually in my top five in the case, which there's only eight, but I think he is pretty awesome. Very unique as well, even though in a couple of more cases, we'll get another car just like him called Motor Turner, who's like a blue version that is a little less rusty, I believe. They're the exact same model, but 
I guess that kind of contributes to that free thing we've been talking about here. Now, I do have a prototype here of Bill Revs that I got from China. You can actually still get this guy if you want. He's only $20 from China. Cheapest prototype I have ever seen. There were a lot made because, like I just said, this applies to Motor Turner and Bill Revs. So they made pretty much twice the amount of prototypes they would normally for just, you know, like Xanadu bumpers because they're not coming out with two Volkswagen bugs right now where they are coming out with two of these station wagons. It also looks like he's flaking off some paint. You can see, look at this. Hmm, that's not good. You can see those little paint strips. I hope it's not anything major. It was just some leftover flaking that was caught up maybe in the fenders. I don't know, but those are the prototype car comparisons. Now here are a couple other characters that I find pretty similar to Bill. This is just a sedan here, Jonathan Wrenchworth. Not a station wagon because it does have the extended back thing. Back thing, I know, right? That's so bad to describe it. But you can kind of see some similarities, you know, in the tires and the wheels, of course. And also, obviously, both of them are super rusty. Bill Rebs could easily fit into the Rusty's tent from Cars 1, without a doubt. Also, we're looking here at a couple more Rusty cars. This is a station wagon, J Shoe Steer, although way bigger and also has a roof rack. J Shoe Steer is one of my favorite cars released in the past few years. I just, I don't know, I love the look of him. He looks fantastic. The rust, I feel like Mattel does a fantastic job with rust every time. Always looks very realistic. The only thing they could have done better about Bill is to make the windows look a little bit tainted, but maybe Bill does a better job maintaining them. Here we have Andy Vaporlock, another rusty car from the good old tent. By the way, Jonathan Wrenchhorse was not from the tent. He was just from the Rusty's commercial. These guys aren't really too similar. I just thought I'd show them for fun. Now on to non-rusty cars. Here's Milo. Again, not a station wagon, but similar. Now I would compare Bill to a Mrs. The King, but you know, she is so different really. I mean, they are both station wagons, but they really have no similarities at all. This is Vern, by the way. Mrs. The King has the roof rack, she's blue, she's modern, she's way bigger as well. All right, so that is pretty much it for Bill Revs. Let me know in the comment section below which Cotter Pin Goer do you prefer that we have right now. The only two besides the main characters are Xanadu Bumpers and Bill Revs here. I don't know why, coincidentally, both of their last names are plural revs and bumpers and i don't know are there any more like that that are coming out i don't think so those are the only two right now i think in the case though there were some other ones let me think about it mm, they do that a lot where they pluralize the last name jonathan wrenchworth even though that's an old car hmm. anyway Thank you guys again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. This concludes our Case E journey. I had a lot of fun doing all these videos and it's not coming to an end because we have another case coming out in just a couple of days here with Andrew Vrooman, Nick Pittire, who is Nigel Gearsley's pity. We have Todd Crash, who is our first background character from the Thunder Hollow, even though Bill technically would be as well, but this guy actually is in the Thunder Hollow series. And we also have Mater with 95 hat. And a single release of Michael Roeder for those who did not buy the 11 pack. And Richie Gunzit is also re-included in this case, so it's a fantastic case. And also Metallic Maryland. All from Thailand though, so you can get, you know, the Chinese version of Metallic Maryland, but she is super duper rare. Enough rambling, I'll let you guys go and enjoy your day. I hope this spruced up your Monday. See you guys later. Bye now.